Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Joel Stafford. I'm an astrophotographer from South East Queensland, Brisbane. And tonight we're back under the stars, just. Uh, the clouds have cleared, I've found a little spot and uh, we're gonna be able to get some photos tonight, hopefully. But tonight I wanna to talk to you about the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. Oh, the Skywatcher Star Adventurer GTI, that brand new tracker from Skywatcher. We've got a whole heap of things to talk about. I want to compare both trackers and whether or not this new tracker is worth buying over this tracker. Let's get chatting. All right, so look, there's a few things I want to chat about when it comes to this new mount, the new Skywatcher Star Adventure GTI. Now, whether or not you're wanting or needing a new mount, a new tracking mount, because you know, if you're wanting to get better images of the night sky, you're gonna want a track, tracking mount. Now, the Star Adventure 2i, great uh, tracker, can hold up to five kilos. It's quite small, uh, relatively small and uh, portable, and it does a great job. So why do Skywatcher bring out a new version called the GTI. So let's get the, the straight away, let's get the most obvious difference of this mount out of the way, and that is the go to function. So if you're not sure or haven't heard of a go to function, uh, mostly that's usually in your bigger, bigger mounts and people who, who do uh, more deep sky uh, astrophotography, they'll have uh, uh, a go to functionality in their, in, their, um, in their mounts where they can do uh, a polar alignment then do a one, two, or three star alignment. Uh, and then once they've done that, their mount will know pretty much where they are situated. And if they can pretty much type in like, you know, M42 Orion, and the mount will automatically just slew over to where the Orion Nebula is, and they can just start taking photos. So that functionality is um, very cool. Um, is it needed for nightscapes? Like probably not. Uh, f like for me personally, um, doing astro nightscapes, like usually I'm doing a bit more of a wider field of view. So um, I think it's when you have those longer focal lengths, uh, the go-to function is definitely uh, more uh, favorable. So, uh, but that's when, that's one of the uh, reasons why it's, they've put this in the new uh, GTI model is that this is now the smallest go-to tracking mount on the market that uh, Skywatch has brought out, which is phenomenal. Uh, the previous model was the EQM35 mount, and that's still quite a small mount. Um, it was it was the smallest, but now with the uh, GTI, it's now sort of just taken over from it. But the EQM35 uh, could do 15 kilos, where see the the GTI is still only doing five kilos, um, but for a small refractor like the 62 ED Evo Lux um, and, and smaller, uh, even like a 72 or an 80 ED, you know, slightly bigger, I guess, um, you're gonna get away with it and that's gonna be a really small package to sort of uh, take out uh, to a dark sky site and, uh, or for a weekend away. And you, know, you can still leave, have a, a big amount at home, but this is a great little portable option. So another difference is with the Skywatcher 2i, uh, it takes four batteries, the GTI takes eight. Uh, I think it's fairly obvious why it would take eight batteries. It has two motors in there now, so it needs double the batteries to power that mount. So with the GTI, you don't have um, a, a, ladder, uh, was it a declination bracket, um, also your latitude base. That, that's all sort of essentially now built in to the mount itself. Uh, because it has that uh, multi-axis uh, movement and go-to functionality. Uh, it does come with a heavier counterweight. The counterweight is a 2.5 uh, kilo weight, where the, in the Star Adventure 2i, it was only a two kilo that you get. So you are getting sli a slighter, heavier weight. Um, I personally also <clears throat> was given by Skywatcher, so thanks Skywatcher, the, um, the full kit. So you can buy this mount as the, uh, the head only uh, uh, with the counterweight and uh, the uh, bar, or you can buy it with the uh, legs as well. So there's there's going to be a two option uh, that you can buy this, uh, definitely here in Australia anyway. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be available everywhere in the world, 
um, but uh, here in Australia you'll get the two options. Um, as I'm filming this, I don't know the exact price yet. Um, it's going to be coming out. The price is going to become a bit more available, obviously, when the release date gets closer. So hopefully by the time I post this, I'll have those prices and I'll put them on the screen somewhere here so you can see those prices. But um, look, I've already got a set of legs and I would probably personally just go the mount. Uh, but if you're looking for something that's a bit more, uh, I guess, uh, you know, not going to be moving around too much, you might want to buy the legs as well. Um, but yeah, the legs aren't really that big either, but a great option nonetheless. So the mount also comes with a uh, USB type B uh, cable as well. So that can plug straight into the mount itself and into a laptop uh, or a, a ZWO ASI Air. And then you can have full control of the mount via a computer like your conventional uh, larger mounts as well. So it has the same capabilities in this uh, small little tracking mount, just like, the, like it's bigger brothers. Um, so that's uh, pretty handy as well for uh, doing those uh, telescope deep, deep sky shots when you want to add guiding and, and things like that as well. So another thing that this mount doesn't have, and that is, uh, I guess, telling it to uh, track north like for the northern hemisphere or track for the southern hemisphere. Um, because this mount uh, has to be connected via uh, the SynScan Pro app, um, it uses your phone's coordinates to determine which uh, hemisphere you're in. So it will uh, track uh, accordingly uh, in that regard. Uh, it doesn't have a time-lapse function. So with the 2i, you could do uh, like Astro time-lapses. Uh, because this mount does have uh, the go-to functionality, it's purposely built for you know, sidereal tracking, lunar and solar tracking. So it's not gonna be um, a replacement in uh, doing any sort of special uh, astro time lapses like I, I guess it's going to be you suppose you could probably still do astro time lapses with it but not in the way that 2i offers so the polar scope is still uh, built into the mount like the 2i uh, i guess the slight upgrade is you don't get the little flimsy red illuminator that you did with the 2i and the in the previous star adventure as well uh, as soon as you turn the uh, the switch on the uh, on the body, uh, which is that's another upgrade, no more dial, it's a little black red switch. Once you turn that switch on, there will be a red light uh, already on inside the poloscope um, already. So whilst the mount's on, that light is also on. Does that drain extra battery? Probably, but I doubt that it's gonna cause any uh, you know, major drainage on your batteries uh, throughout the night. Also, what I should add is that with the design of this mount, the poloscope, when looking through it, is not restricted uh, in certain ways like it was on the 2i. It uh, doesn't matter which way the uh, mount is uh, sort of angled, uh, you also always have a clear view straight through the poloscope uh, as well. So, as I said earlier, uh, the closest relative is the EQM35 mount. That mount uh, does come with like a hand controller, uh, and, and things like that. It is obviously it does carry a bit more, uh, a bit more weight as well. Um, so it, depending on your setup, uh, the EQM5 is still a good option, but the size of this uh, mount is uh, very alluring. So for me personally, as as I've mentioned uh, in previous videos, we're wanting to sort of starting to bridge over from nightscapes and starting to get a bit more uh, telephoto in my astrophotography. Having a mount this small with go-to function is quite attractive without having to go to a larger, more expensive mount like the EQM35. Uh, so even though that EQM35 does have the uh, SynScan controller, uh, you, you've got the app on your phone. So it's not like you're losing out on anything. And the, the app is quite easy to use. It's essentially a modern day controller. Um, if anything, I, I hear more complaints about uh, hand controllers these days than, than good, good things about them. So I think that the app is the way to go regardless. Um, maybe they, uh, you know, more people could probably use the app with the EQM35, but um, you have to with the uh, Star Adventure GTI and uh, it's really, really easy to use. Okay, so that's a few of the differences and I guess uh, with the mount itself from the 2i, but also I guess some differences between it and the EQM35 mount, which is its sort of bigger brother. So it sits in between the two. Um, yeah, as I've already mentioned a few times, the smallest go-to mount now that Skywatch has brought out, which is I think pretty awesome. Um, I would like to see possibly a few 
upgrades to maybe a new Star Adventurer 3i down the line where it's sort of uh, got some more switches and stuff and design like the uh, GTI, um, just without the go-to, of course. And maybe, uh, yeah, maybe that can happen in the future. But um, look, it's slowly clearing up. There's a few clouds around still. Um, I'm gonna get into uh, doing a bit of an alignment process now with the mountain to get ready to start imaging because uh, the Milky Way will start to rise in a couple of hours or so. And um, we'll try and get a photo tonight. It's been a while, so uh, I'm gonna get up to it. I just wanted to give my final thoughts on this mount um, and I've got a few notes here and you know where does this mount really stand because there is the EQM 35 which is a little bit bigger than this it's not ginormously bigger because um, that is still quite a portable little mount but I guess the GTI does take it to that next step and a lot more port uh, portable so I, th I think it's uh, definitely an option uh, for someone out there that was contemplating an EQM35. Um, this will definitely uh, do the job for a small refractor, um, as you can see, uh, and I think um, it'd be, it's obviously gonna come in a little bit cheaper too, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so that's, that, that is an option. Um, and also like for myself who was, uh, is contemplating on doing that little uh, next step into my astrophotography and, going the longer focal length. So having that go-to functionality on a small little uh, mount like this is, uh, is good. So if you're one of those sort of people, I think that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the buyer for this uh, new mount. I, I do like it. Uh, I did get to play with it when I first got it. Um, setting it up is super easy with the app. Um, doing the three-star alignment is easy when you don't have clouds. Um, so I can definitely, uh, I give it, I definitely rate it. It's definitely a good little mount. Um, it's not going to replace my Star Adventure 2i, um, cause it does what I need it to do when doing my nightscape images for, for the landscapes, uh, sort of stuff. So, um, look, if I had some spare cash, I'd love to buy it. Um, I do have to send this back as of tomorrow. That's why I was desperate to get out here tonight under the stars to try and give it a good crack. Um, I'd love to buy it, um, but maybe down the track, not, not, uh, anytime soon, unfortunately. If you think this is for you, I would jump on board and, uh, yeah, definitely buy one. It's a quality, uh, tracking mount, well built, uh, works flawlessly, uh, tracking's great. I just wish I got to use it a little bit more and got a few images out of it. Uh, before giving it back but um definitely definitely rate it so thank you to skywatcher australia for uh entrusting me with a brand new trekking mount and having a bit of a play it's just unfortunate that these last few months uh here in queensland and the eastern australia when i'm get, getting given a brand new little refractor telescope and a brand new tracking mount that we're in some of the worst weather we've had in a long time and it hasn't stopped being cloudy or rainy now for months. So I'm um, looking forward to those cooler winter months. So look, I'll leave it there for tonight. Uh, fingers crossed, I might stay around for a little bit more. It looks like there's a clear patch behind me, but yeah, I might not get, a, might not get an image, but we'll see. But anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy this uh, little video, a little, uh, I guess preview of the Star Adventurer GTI. Um, really cool mount, really happy to have uh, had a go of it. And um, yeah, if you do like this sort of content, please consider subscribing. Um, give the video a thumbs up, that helps get this video out to more people that would, might be interested in gear like this. Um, and it really helps out the channel. Um, if you do have any other comments and questions in regards to the mount, I'd uh, love to try and answer them. Um, I said I've had my limited time with it. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, leave them down below and I'll get back to you uh, when I can. Thanks guys, uh, I will see you all in the next video, cheers.